Hi there, my name is Derek Wang. I'm a technical marketing engineer, or TME for short, with the Aruba Switching TME team. Our automation focused sub team is creating several video series on network automation. This video is the second in a series about automating Aruba switches using their REST APIs and Python. My colleague Kelvin Fox released the first video which introduces REST APIs and REST APIs on Aruba switches in particular. In that video, Kelvin explained how HTTP methods are used to invoke REST APIs. Sending one HTTP request at a time is very useful to test out the Aruba REST APIs. It becomes inefficient, however, to send one request at a time when you need to chain multiple operations together. This video will provide an overview of the plus points of using one particular programming language used to automate REST API interactions, Python. If you haven't watched Kelvin's video, though, I recommend checking out that one first. One important thing to note. Hopefully I can convince you that you need to know Python, but neither I nor my teammates will be teaching you how to write Python code, since there are already plenty of amazing tutorials that do just that. Actually, our own ABC channel features videos that teach you some basic Python. I believe that it's important that educators teach not just how something is done, but why it is done that way. So I will first explain why we use Python and why it's so suitable for network automation. Disclaimer, my team and I have no particular obligation to Python, but we certainly enjoy using it, due in large part to the reasons I'm about to mention. Python is cross-platform, which means that Python code written on any platform, Windows, Mac, or Linux, can be run on any other platform without requiring modification. Python contains a wide variety of built-in libraries, including those for manipulating JSON data and sending HTTP requests and reading HTTP responses. Python is very high level, which means that it takes care of a majority of the under-the-hood stuff for the programmer. It's like driving an automatic transmission car versus driving a manual transmission car. In a manual transmission car, the driver has an added responsibility of shifting gears using two additional controls, the clutch pedal and the gear shift lever. The automatic transmission car also uses gears, but the car knows how to shift gears on its own, so the driver doesn't have to worry about it. The same concept applies to programming languages. With C and C++, for example, the programmer has to manually manage memory by explicitly allocating it when the program requires it, and later freeing it when the program no longer needs it. Because Python is very high level, you don't need a foundation of knowledge in computer science to write good Python code. Python is relatively easy to read. It's commonly said that Python is very similar to English. Although that becomes less true when code gets complicated, in general, Python code is easier to read than that of many other programming languages. Python also promotes increased efficiency. Because Python code does not need to be compiled, the edit, test, debug cycle is comparatively quicker. Python is embraced by not only software developers, but experts and professionals in other disciplines, including mathematics, science, and data analytics. The Python community is a huge ecosystem with many third-party libraries and frameworks written to help you accomplish any task imaginable. Many of these tools are open source, making them free to use and modify. Network vendors, in particular, place a huge emphasis on the creation and development of Python libraries and frameworks to help their customers automate network deployments. One extremely popular orchestration tool in the networking space is Ansible. Major network vendors like Aruba, Cisco, Huawei, Juniper, and Arista, to name just a few, provide their own Ansible data models to increase automation capabilities on their products. Custom modules for Ansible are written in Python, and thus, knowing Python will also improve your understanding of Ansible. As an aside, my colleague and friend Tiffany is starting a video series on network automation via Ansible. You should check it out.
Now, let me show you an example that highlights some of Python's advantages over other languages. These snippets of C++ and Java code perform the same simple operation, printing Hello World to the console. Both are verbose and complicated. Here's the equivalent Python script. This code is short and sweet. It literally reads, print Hello World. It does sound like an English sentence, doesn't it? The side-by-side-by-side -by -side -by -side comparison of these Hello World programs really exemplifies Python's superior readability and accessibility. Furthermore, with the C++ code, after making edits, you would first need to compile the new code into an executable file and then run that executable. Because Python is an interpreted language, after modifying a Python script, you can immediately execute it. There are only a couple prerequisites to begin using Python to automate REST API operations. If you don't already have Python 3 installed, go ahead and install it. Alternatively, you could also use Python 2.7, but I don't recommend it since the official end of life date is next year in 2020. You can future-proof yourself by getting on board with Python 3 now. You will also need an editor to write Python code in. PyCharm IDE integrated development environment is awesome because the community version is free and does everything you need it to. It allows you to run and debug code directly with just one click. It also features GitHub integration. Now, if you don't already know Python, find a good tutorial and learn the basics. Like I mentioned earlier, ABC has some videos that teach you how to write basic Python. Once you've learned Python, you'll be able to follow along when in the next video of this series, I'll show you how to write a Python script to automate some REST API interactions with an Aruba switch. That brings us to the conclusion of today's video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.